Okay. Um, our friend Karim. Okay. ¿Cómo están todos? ¿Bien? ¿Cómo les ha parecido hasta ahora la resonancia? ¿Eh? How is everyone doing? What do you think about the sound so far? Okay, so we're going to start right now. We're going to do a half Spanish, half English. In this panel, we are going to have Dennis Roca. They're going to introduce themselves. We already know Alec. We had a very good conversation with him yesterday, and Karim, who just gave us uh, a small introduction on what's going on in the digital world right now. So the panel for today we would like to talk about the impact of technology in our world and I would like to ask uh, from the audience who, who's an artist here who has a record label or something that resembles it who's a manager here editorial companies we always have people who do not belong to any category, but that's okay. I would like to start by getting introductions from you. Karim, we already know who you are, but uh, the rest of you would like to know who you are, who you work for, and what you do in the industry as an introduction. Gracias, soy Alessoff. Trabajo en Next Big Sound. Esta es una compañía de datos musicales. Nosotros recogemos datos de medios sociales, de ventas, de iTunes, por ejemplo, y servicios de streaming como Spotify, Audio, Win, cosas así. Estos datos los recogemos, los unimos, los analizamos y los entregamos a los gerentes, managers y a, los, a las disqueras para que ellos analicen y realicen lanzamientos o lo que necesiten hacer también trabajo entonces con música me gusta mucho he tocado la batería durante 18 años y me parece excelente poder trabajar con datos y música y me emociona mucho estar aquí y poder hablar de música y cosas así Gracias, Alec. Mi nombre es Karim. Yo soy investigador de una empresa llamada Musicala. Nosotros recogemos entonces los datos, noticias de música, reportamos a nuestros suscriptores de forma diaria. También producimos reportes semanales. Tenemos un sitio web que ustedes pueden visitar, musicala.com. Nosotros entonces trabajamos con disqueras en estrategias y otras empresas también en el, la industria musical también hacemos capacitaciones y trabajamos con artistas también para compartir datos con ellos. Creo que voy a formar una banda con Alex, también toco un instrumento. Hello, my name is Jenny Roca. I come from Bar Barcelona. I come from a company called Roca Salvatella. That's a consulting company. And what we do is we accompany organizations in the digital transformations, and we work for all sectors. We work in banking sector, uh, fashion, tourism, as well as media outlets. We work with uh, music. Etc. I'm surprised about the amount of organizations that exist out there whose uh, directors do not understand that digital is going to transform everything that they understand as a status quo. And I think there are organizations that attack or go against this change. And what I think we need to have is a cultural change. We need to understand that times change, that the user, the artist, the consumer has is in charge now and they make the decisions and decision making has to be done in a different way and all models have changed and some models are going to disappear. Denise, I would like to start the panel with you. I took a look at what you write 
I told you backstage that it's very relevant what you write and in Spanish is very relevant. I think that most of these topics are not being handled in Spanish. You talk about digital and the digital age. Why don't you, why don't you explain to us what the digital age is? I'll try to be brief, but in terms of training, I am a, an archaeologist and I specialized in uh, an era, and a special era, a very old era, and people tell me, how come someone like you, with your background, is writing about digital age? You should write about archaeology, right? But I don't do it. What I learned in archaeology and the age I specialized in is that the story of mankind during the last 4,000 years has been marked by inflection points and they are always related to the appearance of a new technology. So when a new technology changes the production system, the way we make our living is going to change and technology only brings about cultural and social changes. Relevant technologies in the, in the history of mankind we have had only four or five or six. What are those technologies, important technologies that have arose in the history of mankind? The first one I think was when we learned to produce tools by means of rocks, using rocks. We learned to produce the tips of arrows, so that meant that when you went out to hunt, you were able to be away from the animal, not very close, and that's a better way of hunting, right? So if you make a mistake, you have a bigger margin to work with. So working with rocks, that brought about a specialization in terms of work and labor. So we had people who were very handy, very good with their hands. So we had that distinction, that generation of classes. And then we had agriculture. Then we would learn to domesticate animals. And that brought about the appearance or the of private property, for example. So that's another technology that brought about a big change. Then we have industrial revolution that's that brought about the appearance of specialization of the labor also. And this digital technology is going to bring about a big change. It's going to change the production and cultural systems. It's going to change human values too. It's going to change the way we generate relationships amongst ourselves. And this is only starting, this only started 25 years ago. And in the history of mankind, these changes are always small at first when we talk about the use of rocks to generate tools that took about 100,000 years to complete itself. Industrialization took two centuries. And this one, I think, is going to take about 40 years to kick in, really in. So. We have only been doing this for 20 years, so I cannot even imagine what the social impact is going to be. The so the our society is going to change, our values are going to change, government models are going to change, business models are going to change. Um, we are not only talking about having streaming or not, it's about asking yourself, are you prepared to live in a digital society or not, many people think this is related to investment, and I think that we need to have different teams to have this change happen properly. So we're talking about big changes in companies and society. Now talking about it, this change and looking at this from the standpoint of a musician or an artist. What the implications are for musicians, artists? Do you think this is going to be a negative thing or a positive thing? I think it's going to be very positive, but people are suffering a lot and people are losing money and people are what used to be something before and this, their status changed. But I think the model is going to change, and I think it, the model, the new model, is going to be a very good model. What I think, when I look at the previous model, an artist who produced music, literature, painting, there was an artist that produced that piece of art, and there was someone in the middle who distributed that piece of art 
to the place where it was commercialized, actually commercialized. Now the channels, the distribution channels are no longer the same. So the artist is now able to distribute its own work. And that changed everything. So now I think artists uh, have the ability to distribute their own work. You don't, you're not going to have the same scope, the same reach that the previous dealers used to have, but now you have the ability to do it. Now you have the ability of approaching your own audience. So n before the artist, the only thing they had to do was produce a very good piece of art. And some other people were in charge of approaching the audience, but that has changed. Now the artist has to approach its own audience. You're not going to make the same amount of money, but at least you have power over the whole process. This is the thing with record labels. Record labels used to have a big reach. Now the artists, they have to handle that themselves almost. So what you have to be aware of is that People want to listen to your music. The record companies, they wanted to make deals, but people now, they are demanding music, new music, and the artist has to be able to provide a service. So in order to provide a service, you have to be prepared. So the record labels, they know who the authors are, but they don't have an idea who the audience is. I want to give you an example related to the printing industry. A newspaper knows who the journalists are, but they don't know who the readers are. You read a newspaper during 20 years, but the newspaper does not know what football team you support, what music you listen to, they don't care about that. And I think the same thing happens with the record labels. They don't have control over the audience and a lot of control over the author, the artist. And this is not oriented to service. This is oriented to the product, focused on the product. Then it's you mentioned that the, the artist before had to produce the piece of art but based on the new reality, the artist has to have different skill sets. I would like to know what those skill sets are. I would like to have Karim. ¿Qué tipo de actitudes debe tener un artista hoy en día para competir y sobrevivir en el mundo actual? Una de las grandes diferencias en el mundo de la música hoy en día es que los nuevos medios están uniendo todos los elementos. Tenemos video, tenemos audio, tenemos todo en línea. Tenemos que interactuar también con los que escuchan. Tenemos una banda que se llama Lock of the Earth. Ellos hacen muchos covers en YouTube, millones de vistas. Y lo unico, la única forma de hacerlo es tener todas estas actitudes, no solo la música, el video y el baile. Necesitan manejar muchas otras cosas, necesitan generar las ideas para sus presentaciones y generar toda la música. Entonces todo esto tiene que unirse. Pero es un arte diferente, ¿verdad? No solo tienes que ser un compositor, también tienes que ser lo suficientemente creativo para desarrollar lo demás. Sí, absolutamente. Y debes entender de forma profunda tus fans, entender la industria también, lo que el resto lo que el resto de la gente está haciendo también. Karim, ¿qué piensas? Creo que eso es lo más importante. La palabra creativo es lo que debemos utilizar. No solo tenemos que ser buenos en la hora de grabar la música, sino puedes hacer videos o animaciones. Tienes que encontrar a alguien para que te ayude a hacerlo. En la presentación también hablamos un poco de esto. Es, hay un, algunas canciones que son muy buenas, pero son muy populares porque también tienen un buen video y tienen otras capacidades, tienen que capturar la atención de las personas. Hay otras cosas pequeñas que también se deben hacer. Los medios digitales nos permiten tener distribución global en un solo un día. Puedes 
pueden cargar a ustedes un archivo musical en SoundCloud, por ejemplo, y tener este tipo de exposición. Necesitan generar ruido alrededor de su producto. Tienen que encontrar formas de separarse también de lo que no funciona en estos medios. Necesitan ustedes crear su propia imagen. Tienen que mirar lo que otras personas hacen y qué funciona para ustedes. Y de esa forma pueden capturar la atención de las personas. Dennis, please. I think something that's going on with the digital world today, economy has to be cooperation economy, collaboration economy. You don't have to be a brilliant person to and be able to do everything you need to do in this scene. I think that's impossible. I think you don't have all those skill sets. So far, many artists I don't want to generalize, there are some exceptions, but many artists have focused on their work and they delegated the rest to the record company. You need to control the whole process, the entire process. You should not delegate it. You need to have control over the process. And the only way to do this is to have your fellow musicians be your partners. You shouldn't hire someone else to do some things I think the project should be yours. I think that the age of having an eccentric artist, isolated artist, is coming to an end. I think that there are important things. I don't think there is a difference between the video and the lyrics. I don't I think they are all important. I don't think that the graphic design is more important than the lyrics or the other things related to this industry. And I think that you should not delegate any of these things. From a personal standpoint I have always said that the artist should be handling or managing its own content, its social networks, social media, but sometimes this is very difficult to accomplish. Sometimes I don't think we have an idea of how difficult this is, even though we have technology to do it from a smartphone and iPhone, for example. I think that's very difficult to handle, Denise. What do we have to do to switch that, to change it? Because the, this is already happening, and I think we need to catch up. All these tasks that you were talking about, they have to be done by a member of the band. I think that if I were a singer, and I was composing my own songs, I will have to explain to my audience that we are actually four different people. Otherwise, when Twitter, my Twitter account is being looked at by someone else, I think they are not going to feel the same. I think that we have to sell the idea that even if I am a singer, if I sing by myself, I think that they need to know that someone else is working with me on my different social media account. Otherwise, I think people are going to think I'm not authentic. Being authentic today, I think, is a very important issue. Taking into account the changes in terms of the content that we are experiencing today, before we used to have a lot of videos, very expensive videos, full of bling bling. And that's something that we're not seeing today. I think this is changing. Fans want a different kind of content. Y para abrir la pregunta para ustedes también, Karim y Alec. ¿Qué han visto ustedes en términos del contenido y los cambios que se han experimentado? Porque ahora se trata más de ser real y, tener, y no tener estas producciones grandes que se tenían anteriormente. Sí, yo creo que tiene razón. Si ustedes ven los videos musicales que se hacían antes, era el típico video de rap con uh, alguien con una cascada de agua y, y simplemente se paraba y eran fantásticos. Sí, lo eran, pero no le decía nada del artista. Y pienso que tiene razón con el artista tomando control del proceso 
y con esta colaboración cercana se logra una mejor imagen del alma del artista porque está en el control del proceso eso se refleja en el contenido y muestra realmente la personalidad del artista explica sus pensamientos, su contexto y no se ve solo una producción sino un, un pedazo del artista es su casa, su vecindario se entiende más sobre qué artista es ese sí, estoy completamente de acuerdo Juan, creo, creo que con la, esa palabra real es la más importante con todo el ruido digital para saber que los fans sepan que usted es una persona real y para que sea un compromiso bireccional involucrarlos, hable con ellos solo no piense que solo puede lanzar eso allá afuera y ellos van a seguirlo hay que preguntarles cosas producir con tus contenidos y que ellos también lo hagan para usted, usted eh, importarle es, son, es una relación, son gente un error que cometemos es que no pensamos en esos términos, pienso que voy a, a empujar mi música y mis fans lo van a amar no, piensen ellos como gente, lo llamamos como este compromiso bireccional y hay, hay todos estos instrumentos para lograrlo hoy en día y puedo darle un interesante ejemplo a Juan basado en lo que dijo Alex, el artista no es solo su música, es todo lo que hace, eso es lo que es y lo que quieren sentir los fans hablamos de Amanda Palma vio una entrevista muy interesante con ella, una vez la pueden ver en internet y estaba hablando básicamente cuando sale en tour le pregunta a los fans que si se puede quedar en su casa y uno, una persona le dijo no, ¿cómo? no se cansa usted esto es loco, no, no eso es lo que yo hago, eso soy yo es como me gusta comprometerme con, sus, con mis fans, le gusta ir a sus casas, tomarse una copa de vino con ellos y así sean solo esos dos fans es un modo de vida, es como se mercadea a ella, pienso que es bellísimo ver ese compromiso personal y pienso que también se puede lograr online por ejemplo ustedes ven en los videos de YouTube en vivo y ven que es una, una artista que hace cubiertas y dicen quiero que usted me haga que me haga mi, la mía y la gente vota y tres semanas después la persona lo ha hecho el artista lo ha, lo ha realizado este cover Denise, from your experience, how does, has that content changed? The same question, what would be your point of view? Everything is much more complicated, dense. Now it's not enough to have a good song. You have to do many other things that are well done. There, the reference to a value proposal that is fuller, and you need teams. The reflection I wanted to introduce was that if the artist takes control of the product, where does the record company go, the label company? Because before, when you wrote to, to one, they said in our catalog, they had Led Zeppelin, this and that. The product defined it. But if, if the artist takes control of the product, what do I want the, the, the label company for, the record company? So the, this company should demonstrate that they have Uh, if they say I have 20 artists that reach 500,000 people that like jazz in Colombia, that's value. I have a product, that's value. So th if this company says only I have 20 artists, I would be one more. So that it's a change of orientation. So who's going to manage the audience? The problems we have as an artist is that we take control of the full product and we have problems to reach the audience because it, they're very fragmented. It's, it's broken, in, it's atomized. This is as a company I would move there to show that I have access to the audience, that I have knowledge, that I have databases, that I have channels to access them, that I have a channel in YouTube followed by 20 million people. And that ex I can also say that my video made at home is in that YouTube as well. It's very difficult. I think nobody knows this re digital revolution has just begun. If everything I say 
I explain it very vehemently. But if I were true, I would be very rich because all the com record companies in the world would have hired me. It's not that simple, it's complex. Yes, it is. I would like to go to a second point. I have always said it, and this is very related with Alex's presentation yesterday. The great difference between the business nowadays and 20 years ago is information. 20 years ago, when, a per, when someone went to a record shop to buy an LP, a cassette, they left some money at the cashier and left, but they didn't know anything about that person. They just accounted one sale. But nowadays, when a fan buys a song in iTunes, I can know where that fan is. When someone listens to a stream in Diesel, I know in what city he is located, how many songs he listened to, what kind or for how long. When each one of us watches a video in YouTube, I can know where that person is too. When I speak about consumption as to a trying to get the people when I go to a concert and, and it, it, it didn't work. The fans are going to give me that feedback and said it, it was a failure or whatever. That is information. So, Janice, you had in your blog an article that said paralysis because of analysis. For me, that information is very valuable because it allows to adjust the strategy to improve decision making. You know, where your fans are situated, like Alex said yesterday, the consumption during the weekends is higher so I can improve my message and address that. I have information to take decisions. That's very important for me. For Janice, why don't you explain to us a bit that, uh, about paralysis by analysis. What does all that information mean? How can we use it? There are so many data that we're going to get lost because there are too many. Uh, nowadays there are too many data and very little questions. We, uh, you should focus yourself on questions. If I know the question, I will know the adequate data. I had an example. For example, as an archaeologist, when in the low Paleolithic we are thinking about hominids, the homo sapiens, each one thinking about his own. And every time that we found a skull, we had thousands of data about that skull, the perimeter, the thickness of the wall, or the number of dental pieces. We had photographs. Uh, we drew it on, up to scale. We had all these dossier, but there were no questions, only data. Up to the day that we started changing the method, and we decided to make questions. We thought herbivorous or carnivorous. To answer that question, we only needed two data, the thickness of the jaw because of the, the, the strength to chew, and also the, the way that uh, they were worn away, the, the teeth, the molar teeth. So that was a data we had never taken. True. We only needed all the, these two data and they hadn't been taken. So that's what's going to happen ha now. We're going to have 256,000 data, but there are questions that are answered only with two. And maybe we were not collecting them. For example, operators of mobile phones, how many of you have a mo uh, mobile in your pocket? Let's ask on the other, the other way, who doesn't have one? Oh, you will be ashamed to raise your hand. You have it in your bag, not in your pocket. The mobile operator knows how many people are at a concert and knows how many people I come from Barcelona, for example, my mobile has roaming from Barcelona. The mobile operator in a concert knows how many people from, from Spain, Germany, France, for an example, or people from Argentina, how many days they stayed in Bogota, because if the concert was on Tuesday and they left on Wednesday, they can tell the mayor's office 
that this concert made three pe people stay three days at the, in the city. So that's important that this is another model for income. And you can go to the tourism office. So uh, because we didn't ask them, we missed that data. But the mobile operator has it. Excellent example. Yes, I think it's very good. So how do we do now? La it's it's a shame that our friend Galan left because we had a, a, a in our previous panel someone from Tigo, an operator that would have been very interesting to ask him. Juan Karim. Karim y Alec, continuando con esta discusión de data, sé Alec, sé tu pasión con esto, ya lo dijiste en tu presentación ayer, pero piensas, ¿qué piensas de todos estos datos? ¿Cuál es el significado para el artista? Yo creo que a un nivel eh, no muy profundo es, es, es importante saber los datos eh, para las compañías eh, sí, el problema es que hay muchos datos las compañías tienen demasiados datos eh, eh, todas estas eh, métricas de música nos ayudan para tener sentido de estos datos espero no salirme de mi, de mi respuesta no, pero quiero decir que no hemos ignorado los datos a nivel eh, grande y, y, y chico podemos saber dónde están los fans sabemos dónde se, se se ve este video tal vez en Japón entonces me dedico a ellos así de hago incrementar la base de, de fans allá y así es como individuo como empresa disquera lo hacemos eh, quiero mostrar un estudio de caso interesante eh, había una persona que bajó un, una descarga gratis y rastrearon dónde se había bajado y así fue como planearon la gira porque dijeron bueno vamos a ir a estos sitios entonces estos datos son un deber realmente lo son sí yo creo que Ustedes tienen que comenzar con las preguntas. Es una manera de reducir el volumen de datos que se requieren. O por lo menos a los que leen prestar atención. O sea que estamos recolectando de iTunes, Spotify, Timestamps, por Zip, Geographic. Pero lo que le pregunta a la gente es el contexto y poder contar historias con estos datos. Ustedes pueden querer ver todo para ver dónde van en su gira pero también quieren sus datos para ver cuáles sus, son los objetivos. Por ejemplo, teníamos un cliente que, que quería su artista en Saturday Night Live. Y ustedes están tratando de mostrar la historia de que este artista ha tenido un crecimiento enorme y pueden usar nuestro producto para mostrar una serie de tiempo en el mapa y mostrar toda la extensión de fans, pero tal vez no necesitan eso para mostrar esa historia. En lo que nos enfocamos es en cuál es la clave y cuál es la trayectoria que usted quiere mostrar. Entonces mostraron solamente una Sharp que mostraba a los fans a través de Facebook y se, movía, se veía esta gráfica con este arco que subía muchísimo entonces esta es una historia concreta mostrando los datos entonces la manera de, de, de manejar ese volumen de datos es recortarlo al mensaje algo más que quiero decir Juan es que creo que esta, las plataformas son como lo, lo importante de, de ver, vemos en este video tantos clics, vemos por qué hubo, hubo tantas ventas en Filadelfia en tal día. Entonces lo que hemos trabajado es hasta acá, es porque eh, en este programa se, se, se presentó esto y creó estas ventas, porque esto realmente le va a ayudar a la gente porque no tienen que analizar tanto. Es, 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 de, tengo esa esperanza. ¿Cuándo va a suceder? I would like to contribute something else with data. It is clear that data are going to be important. I, in fact, I think that social media are a data business. When you are, are the majority of you are artists, performers. I think with all this work you have. Be, before you, you have to be like Renaissance men to do all this. Otherwise, you have to want to wish to have that data. For, what does that mean to say? 
I mean that the majority of you, it's normal in your band, in your activity, to have a Facebook page, for example, whatever, MySpace. And the majority of you are uh, to have the majority of fans. Or, uh, I have already 5,000 in Facebook, so many in the others. That database is from Facebook, not yours. So Facebook, with your hard work to be able to uh, have five, 15,000 fans, Facebook is schizophrenic. They, they always change the rules. They changed them last week. If you want to speak with all of me, I, this, I will charge $100. But I worked 50, to get 15000 I have to pay to manage that. No, it's not logical. A lot of strategies consist in, if you follow me in Facebook, I will raffle tickets to a concert. That's a way to do it. I speak to you in Facebook because that's the space where I was able to keep that conversation. But if you follow me in my web page, in my database, I will not only raffle two or 20, I, more. You, so you have to readdress your public to a place that is your own. Because if you do it in another page, it's, that's not smart. It's like, for example, if you rent a home and you do uh, improvements and it's there. So about all the things we said, there are many data, but there are some that could be yours, so try to catch them. I would like to go to the last point of the panel before opening questions to the public, and I want to be very creative. What is coming? You saw in your presentation, Karim, you spoke about a part of the future, what it was like before and what it, we see now, but what is going to happen. I'm going to tell you an anecdote. Do you know the future music book? It was written by a professor in Boston. What is his name, Karim? Kid Leonard. Uh, I re read it in 2005, eight years ago. And in that book, the thesis was that music becomes like water. And what it wants to say is that nowadays, water is available. It is for free, but we pay for bottled water. So this is the base of the book. They, it makes an analysis of, uh, uh, about what streaming services would be. Somehow I found it last week. You can read it in, in a day. It has a few pages. And oh, surprise, everything they were be, that we're saying in 2005 is exactly what is happening today. I remember that there were many detractors at that time when it came out. And this is what we are living right now. It is actually happening. But what is coming with technological development? What can we expect? And let us be very aggressive in that way of thinking. What do you think is going to happen with us who are in this, performers, managers? What is happening? Please, your thoughts. I don't know whether we need a moment to reflect, but let's say something very, the idea is not aggressive. I don't know. Something savage, we would say in Colombia, wild, to see what would come out. I, I have no idea. But do you know, I can see an oscillation of forces. I think that thanks to incorporating the people into the internet, and allowing them to express themselves in internet, you can express yourself there. And since I'm always uh, tied up with music, I can k say my critique about your piece of music. I think th that public space for information is being closed, and it's being closed very rapidly. I think that the internet is every time less open. I think it is more difficult to act. Apple controls who is in your iPod. 
and it decides who goes into the App Store. And if you don't, if if you don't want, they don't want you in the Apple Store, you will not enter. It is not an open architecture. Platforms are getting closed. Then, subsequently, the conversation is becoming close. What Twitter conversations used to be, or in other sites, are going to WhatsApp, and conversations there are not uh, monitorizable. People are becoming very discreet. If they want to say something, they say it in private. So internet, the internet is becoming closed. And to add all this about the Brick Brother and governments with Thomas Snowden and everything that could happen. Finally, we are in the digital era, Google and Facebook do everything we do. And they, before they used to say, yes, we can, now we say, yes, we can. What does that mean for the artist? Uh, well, I, I, as I said, I have no idea. If everything is closer, if you need to take the take control of the channel. If you have 10,000 fans, do not take them to Facebook or any of these sites. So I'm going to tell you this in a different way. The strategy was to have 10,000 fans in Facebook, the strategy should change. You should have 20,000 in Facebook, and you should try to turn 5,000 of those, take them into your database, because five, to have 20,000 in my own Facebook is going to be more difficult, because you have more people on Facebook. But it's not enough for me to have 20,000 on Facebook and 5,000 on my own database, because the conversations in that way are going to be more private. And if they are more private, if you are on, on my own database, I'm going to be able to have a private conversation with you. But if in, ten, in five years, if you ask me if we're going to have Facebook in five years, I, 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 won't, I wouldn't be able to give you an answer to that. I don't think Facebook is going to be there in five years. I think this is not going to happen. But ¿Qué piensas, Alec? Es gracioso, veo que la, la música y la industria musical va a cambiar cuando crecí, cuando estaba creciendo, escuchaba solo el radio, no tenía interacción directa con los artistas, solo podía ver entonces la cara limpia que ellos mostraban y sus canciones, pero no podía interactuar con ellos, lo que podía hacer, lo máximo que podía hacer era llamar a la estación de radio para interactuar con ellos estaban siendo entrevistados entonces en contraste internet los trae más cerca y creo que abre más la conversación puedes entrar a Facebook y hablar con cualquier persona en cualquier parte del mundo con respecto a un artista puedes también ver en vivo a tu artista en internet entonces está ampliado también la economía musical hay artistas que pueden colaborar de forma más abierta entre ellos los artistas se pueden encontrar entre ellos más fácilmente y creo que eso está cambiando cambiando la industria musical, el nivel de colaboración que se ve es muy diferente. Y creo que con los servicios de streaming, esto va a cambiar mucho más la forma en que ocurre la cons el consumo. Mi comportamiento personal de compra de música, yo compraba muchos CDs anteriormente y ahora solo utilizo streaming, ni siquiera utilizo iTunes para comprar, ni siquiera utilizo la colección de música que saqué de mis CDs y tengo en mi reproductor musical. So you don't like, you don't like ACDC or Led Zeppelin, right? Ellos no están disponibles. Muy bien, es, es difícil. Si lo miras de esa forma, creo que tienes razón. Cierra entonces la industria musical, pero al mismo tiempo tienes SoundCloud, o tienes YouTube, tienes todos estos servicios en donde cualquier servicio en el mundo, artista en el mundo, cualquier persona en este cuarto, por ejemplo, puede grabar una canción, subirla y que la vean si, miles y miles de personas. Entonces, el sistema puede promover contenido de formas diferentes con base en diferentes actividades. YouTube también tiene un sistema de ranqueo de los videos. SoundCloud tiene también un servicio en donde muestra las canciones más populares. Y de esta forma entonces ayudan a las canciones, a los artistas. 
Pero este es el momento presente. ¿Cuál, ¿Qué viene a continuación? Creo que esto va a ocurrir más y más. Creo que vamos a ver... Estamos en un mundo en donde la música es muy relevante, pero creo entonces que vamos a tener un crecimiento más orgánico de música. Se va a generar música de forma más orgánica y creo que esto va a ser más abierto, más social y creo que vamos a tener datos también detrás de esto para poder identificar a los artistas de forma más temprana y de esta forma cambiar entonces la forma en que los artistas pueden encontrar su lugar en el mundo. Karim, me gustaría escucharte utilizar una palabra como holograma o spaceship. Desde la perspectiva de la música del artista, creo que todo es posible y todo va a ser global e instantáneo, si ustedes quieren que así sea. Hablando de chips, algo interesante que pasó esta semana, Spotify lanzó Spotify Connect, lo que esto quiere decir es que se van a asociar con algunos fabricantes de hardware y colocar un chip en el producto, por ejemplo, su sistema de alta fidelidad, entonces podrán controlarlo desde su su teléfono, van a poder controlar Spotify desde el teléfono, pero entonces eh, la música va a ser streaming hacia el sistema de alta fidelidad, hacia ese hardware que tiene ese chip, entonces este tipo de cosas va a empezar a ocurrir, entonces en el futuro quizás todo vaya a hacer un dispositivo inteligente, por ejemplo mi chaqueta va a tener unas habilidades, este sofá va a ser un, un dispositivo inteligente también, una nevera también puede ser un dispositivo inteligente, se podría ver desde la nevera una, una proyección de un holograma por ejemplo un video de Black Eyed Peas puede ser proyectado como un holograma entonces en nuestra cocina vamos a ver de, de la nevera, vamos a ver cómo Fergie por ejemplo sale de, de la nevera y cosas así van a pasar todo va a ser un dispositivo inteligente y las posibilidades no tienen fin, puede llegar a este sofá y puede proyectar algo en holograma desde aquí podemos incluso hablar con o interactuar con la proyección holográfica pero entonces la tecnología es algo increíble las posibilidades no tienen fin pero entonces piensen en lo que ha ocurrido hablando de Spotify Connect por ejemplo ellos están colocando chips en muchos dispositivos y de esta forma los están convirtiendo en dispositivos inteligentes y van a ser muy interesantes las posibilidades desde el punto de vista de la música y del consumidor las posibilidades son muchas pero para los músicos hemos visto como también las, los cambios en la tecnología han permitido la creación de nueva música por ejemplo muchas de las personas con las que trabajo podrían entonces incluso crear música desde donde trabajamos yo trabajo en electronic house music esta es la tecnología, entonces nos ha permitido también crear mucho más música, interactuar con la música de mejores formas. Yo entonces fui a Music Cacophone, hay algo que llamamos Late Motion que acaban de lanzar. Es un dispositivo que puedes colocar en tu escritorio y ellos este dispositivo interpreta los movimientos de tus dedos. Entonces... El, este dispositivo puede incluso mapear mis movimientos de los dedos a acordes en una guitarra o en otro instrumento. Entonces, de esta forma puedo controlar el flujo, la música que produzco. Entonces, este tipo de cosas va a generar mucho más colaboración. Esto lo genera uh, una empresa denominada Biobins. Este es otro ejemplo. Se puede monitorear la el movimiento cardíaco de una persona utilizando la cámara del teléfono celular. Entonces, yo veo muchos amigos que utilizan otros dispositivos para esto, pero entonces hay diferentes dispositivos que nos permiten hacer diferentes cosas, hay dispositivos que permiten interacción con músicos de una forma más orgánica y esto va a abrir muchas más posibilidades. Quiero mencionar algo, creo que la esta captura de la emoción del movimiento es algo muy bueno, un ejemplo que acabo de recordar, 
Imaging Heap produjo un guante búsquenlo en YouTube eh, se llama Imaging Heap es un guante que se desarrolló para ambas manos y lo que hace esta persona es utilizar el guante para controlar sintetizadores y cosas esto lo utilizan muchos músicos es hermoso en realidad es, cuando miran el video se ve como si estuviera bailando pero en realidad está manejando diferentes instrumentos las posibilidades son muy grandes quiero hablar de algo más de nerds yo tengo historia en ingeniería bioquímica y sé mucho de intera interacción con el sistema nervioso. Hoy en día existen prótesis que ustedes pueden conectar a la corteza inferior del cerebro que maneja el cerebro. Entonces, personas que so tienen parálisis, por ejemplo, pueden obtener un implante que les puede ayudar a controlar el movimiento de las prótesis, pero entonces de lo que estamos hablando de música, cuando hablamos de música hay muchas posibilidades, podríamos controlar toda una orquesta pero esto puede ocurrir en el futuro, no ahora. Pero entonces creo que vamos a poder conectarnos mucho más entre personas, conectarnos como humanos a cosas. Vamos a tener mucha más conectividad. Muy bueno. Creo que es hora. I think it's time to have the Q&A open now. Who has? Who wants to ask the first question? A short one. I have question. First of all, my name is Gabriel Bernal. I'm an IT information technology student. I love music. I have a question, a very specific question for you related to economy and the business models. My question is, what's the effect that something that changes all the time as uh, human behavior, what's the impact that this has on the way that I sell myself as an artist if, for example, I'm targeting a market that is stable today and all of a sudden there is a big change, a uh, revolution or something that as complex as the Spanish situation today. So. How do you handle this if you don't have any economic knowledge or knowledge related to the economy of regions, especially something as sensible as economy? And another part of my question related to uh, statistics. How would it help me, for example, if I want to be someone like Simon Cowell? He has years of experience and his data has been collected by himself based on his experience. So how would it help me as a producer, for example, for me to be able to have this creativeness, to be able to read that data, to interpret that data, and help a new band that is trying to make it to the scene but I only have that data, so how can I interpret that if I don't have the possibility of having access to that knowledge or the experience that someone may have, some leaders may have in the market? So I hope your ans my answer is useful. Otherwise, let's talk about it. Because sometimes it's not easy to answer a question like this. Economy, it's life itself. Life and other things. But that's an ingredient of our life, the way we make our living. And it's not easy at all. What's going on in Spain is that all the strategies in social networks, the purpose of them is to take people into concerts. So that's the idea behind that. We're trying to sell concerts. We are no longer trying to sell records. We're trying to get fans to go into concerts, and that's what we're trying to do. We have merchan merchandising behind that, too. But I would rather talk about something I mentioned before. You're not, I told you, you're not going to be good at everything. If you're not good at something, you need to have a partner. And I think the record labels are not the ideal partner. I, I, work, I worked in Sony, or someone here works, works for Sony. But you need to have your own partner. 
not a partner that has a thousand partners. It, I should have my project partner, my trip partner. So if Sony is able to convince you that they're the best partner for your project, that's great. But if they're not, you need to look for someone else. If you have a weakness, if you're good at, at many things, but you have a weakness, you need to have a partner. You need to surround yourself by people who are capable. Maybe you're a good composer, but you need a lead singer. You need to have the ability of finding that partner. I don't know if I answered your question. Empiezo entonces. Creo que lo más difícil con relación a los datos es que no son buenos los datos solos sin interpretación, es solo una parte de la historia, los datos son una parte de la historia tienen que entender la dinámica detrás de los datos si ustedes van a ser un físico, ustedes además de las ecuaciones tienen que saber cómo se mueven los objetos, cuál es la interacción entre ellos, por ejemplo hablando entonces de los expertos musicales que existen Creo que todavía son muy importantes, todavía debes tener la capacidad de trabajar con personas que entienden la industria musical de arriba a abajo. Y creo que contestaste la pregunta. Necesitas más personas, necesitas personas que tienen experiencia con datos y con la industria musical. Una herramienta te puede ayudar a comprimir los datos, pero de todas maneras los tienes que interpretar y los tienes que interpretar desde el punto de vista de las dinámicas y esto solo se hace con base en experiencia. Simon Cowell is who he is because he has that sense of smell and that's what we have in the industry, the producers behind all the hits from Rihanna and all this pop music, these people they have that sense, it, that's not something that comes from data, the data is going to be useful to know what market you need to target or the niche that you need to approach, there is an issue that I feel very passionate I feel very passionate about. In Barcelona, your city, there are two companies, one that is still there, so one, another one that collapsed. One of these companies works with Chazam. What they did was develop a technology. In, they put, they brought all the hits from the last 30 years, music hits, into a database and they analyzed this data and they found some trends, some patterns uh, on some bits that they produced. And based on this, you had the ability of introducing your own music and the system told you what your, your chances were based on historic data of having a hit or not. And that died because music is more a connection, a spiritual connection, if you will, or a high connection. And I think that uh, will, not, will not help you there, will not tell you what's a hit or not. Any other questions? Estoy de acuerdo con lo que dice el panel, no voy a añadir mucho, quizás algo práctico. No se asusten, no dejen que nosotros los asustemos. Estamos hablando de porcentajes y cifras, pero es ah, mucho más sencillo. Intenten quizás su sonido sea una muy buena plataforma y hay muchos buenos datos disponibles por eh, gratis, libres y quizás todo sea más sencillo a una escala global, quizás ustedes tengan un video que se esté viendo mucho en un país y a una hora específica, quizás ustedes entonces puedan organizar un concierto streaming para ese país y esa sería una buena forma de capitalizar los datos, lo que acabamos de decir de la economía y el consumo, si a ustedes les preocupa cómo esto se comporta y cómo esto se relaciona con los ingresos que ustedes puedan tener, quizás ustedes puedan utilizar los datos para saber a quién se le puede Pueden vender los tiquetes, por ejemplo, y realizar diferentes campañas. Quizás uno de, sus, de los miembros de sus bandas sea bueno haciendo pasteles. Entonces, dejen que esta persona le haga un pastel a uno de sus fans. Esa sería una buena forma de promoverse. Pero entonces deben generar diferentes formas de 
obtener ingresos. ¿Alguna otra pregunta? ¿Alguna otra pregunta? Solo una pregunta. Hola a todos. Hola a todos. Mi nombre es Juan Nicolás Correa. Trabajo en NT Network y en MCM, como dijiste. Said, uh, I grew up with YouTube, and everyone is talking about how relevant a streaming platform has in the music industry. So my question is very simple. What do you perceive in terms of numbers? How do you see YouTube is performing? How is it helping streaming and digital minds in terms of disseminated music and what is your perception in terms of YouTube as a phenomenon and how is it influencing digital minds? Talking about advertisement. Um, I think YouTube is huge. Creo que YouTube uh, es muy grande. Es inmenso. Ayer cuando les mostré algunas de mis diapositivas, una de ellas estaba hablando de un artista que tenía muy buenas ventas y no tenía exposición en los medios. Y esto estaba relacionado con la presencia en YouTube. Entonces muchos fans en YouTube lo habían conocido de esa forma. Esto no lo puede ignorar ningún artista, ya sea grande o pequeño. Creo que esto genera compromiso y permite que los artistas sean conocidos. No sé si esto responde a su pregunta, pero creo que es muy un componente muy importante de la industria hoy día. YouTube es uh, really something else. It becomes so dense. There is so much there that it's very difficult to be keep in front. It's a good tool, indispensable. I can't imagine a defense of the performer without using YouTube. But what is difficult is to be relevant. Uh, maybe today I have got up pessimistic. I don't know what has happened. I am the biggest fan in this room in believing in the strength of social media and how they are going to transform and push. But to be relevant in YouTube is only to the reach of real professionals. You do have to be very good to be relevant in YouTube. It is false that a domestic video that is badly made will be successful in YouTube. There, you have to be very good or you have to be have fun, like, because there is so much quantity that you will be annoyed within all this general noise. I would like to complement the answer with another reflection. The platforms we are working on are so global, YouTube, uh, Spotify, Twitter, that it seems like we have the ambition of being global ourselves, the majority of us with our trajectory through the social media is to be good locally. You can have 2,000 visions in YouTube and you can be very efficient to be relevant in the zone T in Bogota, this zone of Bogota. It all depends of having 2,000 views in YouTube because we're not all in this global war. In, in the local market, some thousand views are, are, are good. Maybe 30,000 would be better, but they're good enough. As to whether it moves sales, yes, it does. Alex, yo creo que tú puedes decir eso. We have seen that when an artist has views in YouTube, they do translate into downloads because it's popular. What is popular is what moves us. Download. It does work like that. Yeah, and, and I think it's really. Sí, matter, yo creo que uh, del mercadeo, aparte del video, como usted dice, es local y también está dirigido a su base de fans. O sea que si yo fuera a subir un video ahora, no hay manera de que estuviera en la top list. 
pero sí puedo decirle a mis amigos, a los fans que tengo y lo puedo mascarear específicamente hacia la gente que conozco para que les importe. Y puede ser no necesariamente instrumento para que otros me descubran, sino un medio para mi mensaje. Y haciendo esto puedo tener eh, a mis fans y construir una base de ventas. The second question, please. My name is Pablo Orjava. I have an urban alternative band. We do everything from the social media because we haven't had a label and we always have the opportunity to play in countries where the, they don't sing in Spanish. I am very interested in what Karim and Alex have to say about data. I am pragmatic like genius and I think we are all going to the fact that we're going to close the potential, the data potential to, to the people that have the potential. But I'm worried about monetization. It is marginal. It has become, and what I heard you say, the more it was interesting, interesting, and all these models are very interesting, but the reality is that these are models that are really changing the fact that the majority of those musicians be able to live from that music. With labels, it was, they were phenomena the, it, built by the label and now it, it, the internet is also about phenomena and monetization is marginal it has changed for the worst i before used to sell the full track but then if i i sell a marginal song i have to feel well because they bought it in sweden but three thousand downloads around the world it will not add up as if i could sell this record in a shop in a, in a mall. So is the marginal going to bring the income to be enough for alternative artists? I think it doesn't, hasn't hap doesn't change for independent. Bueno, si puedo comenzar, Pablo, con, con respeto, de, no estoy en acuerdo con su, tal vez su experiencia personal es distinta. Pienso que siempre ha sido difícil lograr ingresos con la música, pero pienso que es fácil si usted es popular y logra tener una base de fans. Creo que con usted puede generar mucho ingreso si es popular y con estos nuevos ingresos que usted puede generar con nuevas experiencias o utiliza campañas para tener estos ingresos. Tal vez no reciba mucho del streaming y de los downloads, pero, entonces, el, es, pero trate de ser creativo. Hay un artículo de Tony Kuehl de que se llama de encontrar las cintas de los de las monedas, se llama. Es algo que podría ser interesante para usted. Sí, yo creo que también es, es un financiamiento masivo para los artistas. Es un boom en este momento. Un amigo que tiene un, que, un fire artist que es, que es como un tuning barato. Ahora son independientes, quieren hacer un, un disco lo que, quieren, lo que hacen es una campaña de inicio y entonces hicieron esta base de fans porque proveyeron un contenido gratis, eh, todas estas entrevistas, todas estas pistas. Entonces, tal vez solo están recibiendo 500 dólares al mes, pero porque lograron comprometer a toda esta gente cuando pidieron dinero para construirse, tal vez es la mejor manera para, para construir a estos artistas, para monetizar y por lo menos comenzar. Lograron juntos lograr esta base de fans y que la gente fuera a los conciertos. Es, eh, es el mercadeo, la, el, el touring, las giras y cómo ustedes mercadean a través del YouTube, de, del online y cómo logran hacerlo con su base de fans. Since I'm not from this field, I sometimes uh, am afraid of being wrong. But there's music since humanity has existed, but the business of selling music has uh, been around for only 50 or 60 years. 
the long PA uh, is born in the 50s. During the last 20,000 years, the musician has made a living interpreting his music, or performing before a public. It's for the public to be ready to purchase an object uh, from, from, the, for, from the perspective of a archaeologist of the Paleolithic. This has been a very brief period of time. And then you have to defend your music directly. And by contrast, uh, the authors of literature uh, who cannot have live performances do have a very big problem. Because when the per people don't buy the book anymore because they get it online, where does the business lie? So, uh, so what is the, the, the poet's uh, earning? So whoever writes the poem is really, really wrong, really messed up. I would like to add something as well. It is, continues to be very difficult to be a phenomenon. It's difficult, we know. But uh, the fact that you may be selling a record in Scandinavia, digital allows you to uh, extend your frontiers to be able to have your videos there. Because if, if it, it cost me a lot to have come to an agreement with a digital manager, and it cost me 10 million pesos to do it, but then it only cost you five minutes online to fill up a form for someone, uh, an aggregator, and then you send a send, and then you are in all platforms. So if that is for free, why not do it? And why not do it? The long ter term exists. What you do now will be available. Who knows when? Uh, maybe when there is a solar explosion, I don't know when. But why not do it? If you have the rights, your rights uh, very clear that material is yours. Labels, I heard uh, yesterday that sales in iTunes 80% were mainstream and 20% were catalog, but it really is not like that. That equation is not that true. They are making a lot from catalog, particularly through streaming. People, in, I in Spotify do, do not listen the latest of Jay Baldwin. I, I listen to Pink Floyd, Metallica, the music I like, the, that's the way I listen and music that came out a long time ago. And that was a few weeks ago, yes, but now I'm listening to everything now. So if you can upload your music there, why not do it? And then you continue growing your popularity, and that content will definitely generate money for you. Hello, my name is Jaime Gavile. I have a management agency called BP Entertainment. My question was, you say that social media are a data business, basically, but what happens when they are false? There are companies now who are getting uh, followers in Twitter and Facebook, and there are some artists that pay for it. So what is the way of acting of these social media? What, what is their response between, before this these false data? What is another way of acting before this false data in the social media? The n number of fans is not the data. It is how many are from Bogota, how many from Barcelona, how many are men, wim women, how many are overage, underage, etc. That is the valuable data to know w what profile uh, they have. Oh, the valuable one is to see uh, within the with mobiles how many assisted the concert. The, the number of fans and followers is a question of testosterone. It's cultural. 
Do you like to have a, a, a big size because they have told you that that's important? But the business data is another. It, it, it's not so much the size, but the results. It, they explained this, and, and it, I didn't believe it. It's not, it. it's not the size, but what you know how to do. With that, I manage. The number of fans is not interesting. I'm not interesting in that. It's not the final data with which I want to build my business. It's an intermediate one. That's all right. The, mi the majority of people that buy funds is because they, they want to equal somebody with a size, but their management is not based on that data, but another one. I don't analyze. We don't do things. Uh, our analyses are not based on the number of fans. That is correlated with a number of in interactions that's different. There are also uh, cheating data. I know, we know there, there, there are a lot of, uh, there's a lot of this, so we do have to dig in to get the, the real data. Sí, es interesante, no es un fenómeno nuevo realmente, esto ha sucedido por mucho tiempo, no solo en los redes sociales, sino cuando la gente se iba a los almacenes de discos y llamaban a preguntar cuántas personas han comprado este disco, las eh, emisoras de radio estaban buscando estos datos y la gente mandaba a sus representantes locales y si no se habían visto allá en los programas de radio, lo, lo hacían que lo hicieran. O sea, siempre se va a jugar con los datos a manipular. Pienso que hoy en día el, el beneficio es que los datos son más abiertos. En Twitter se pueden ver todos los seguidores, todos los nuevos de un artista. Y hay sitios allá afuera y que van a, a, a mirar, a profundizar y ven por este seguidor de Twitter eh, ¿qué, qué posibilidad hay de que se conecte de acuerdo a otros seguidores de los tweets que han mandado y, y tanto Twitter como Facebook y estoy seguro que YouTube también tiene equipos internos que están trabajando muy duro con estas métricas le importan a la industria ellos están trabajando para sacar spam pero no es nuevo es, no es nada nuevo ahí en el planeta no tengo mucho que agregar, pienso que estoy de acuerdo con lo que tú has dicho, es más la información enfocada en el negocio, lo que es importante desde el punto de vista de ustedes no es la cifra, sino la fortaleza de cada pan individual, lo que realmente importa. Bueno, to finish, Karim Alec, Denise, thank you very much. I hope that it has been very pleasant for you as well. And I'm going to tell you what comes next. At 2 o'clock, 2.30, we will have the artist panel, Sergio Mejia from 33, La 33, Bravo from Esponeta. So we'll see you here uh, for on. later on. Okay, thank you very much.